I am on a mission to help you better your life and better yourself through hacking. And I honestly think that bug bounties are just a great place to do that. So regardless of what your outcome is or what your goals are, whether you want to become a pen tester, join a red team, or just simply become a bug bounty hunter, this video is for you. And if you're wondering how bug bounties can do any of this for you, well, allow me to explain. Well, I started doing bug bounties in 2013. I was about 23 years old, 24 years old. I was still in college. I was just about to graduate. And honestly, I was just tired of roaming the hallways and going to these courses that I didn't care about. I honestly didn't want to write any code in Java because that's exactly what my school did. Everything was around Java, learning how to code in Java, creating games on mobile phones. And honestly, nothing that really piqued my interest. And if I'm being honest, a lot of the InfoSec content or cybersecurity content that my school offered weren't really up to date or anything that really was not something I could learn on my own or haven't done so already when I was going to college. And deep down, I, as a kid, I always enjoyed breaking things. And I've also dabbled in hacking a little bit. I used to hack my friends in school just for fun and play pranks on them. And I really wanted to get back into doing that. And eventually, I learned about companies like Yahoo, Facebook, and Google that were doing bug bounties before any of these platforms like Bug Crowd, Hacker One, Synag, Integrity were a thing. So when I heard about these opportunities that you can make money by hacking organizations, I really wanted to get involved and I started to create my Twitter account. So if you go look at it, you will see sometimes either early 2014 or late 2013 is when I joined Twitter. And you can see that I was really into reading write-ups from people like Mark Litchfield, looking at Zigu, who played a huge role in my bug bounty hunting in the earlier days, and also looking at the Detectify blogs that were written by Franz Rosen and a couple of his friends when they were just doing bug bounties for fun for research and to make some money and create a product of some sort. So you can see that at this time, there was a few bug bounty hunters around already doing the things that I wanted to do, and they really gave me the inspiration and motivation to want to get into bug bounty hunting. I mentioned Zigu when I told him that his Yahoo RCE actually was a big inspiration for me to want to hack on Yahoo's bug bounty program and being able to find the same exact vulnerability as him, which was a remote command execution on Yahoo, was the thing that got me motivated and gave me the drive to want to get into bug bounty hunting and hacking. Just reading these write-ups, reading from Zigu, reading from Detectify, Mark Litchfield, it really gave me the motivation to want to hack anything and everything that I could obviously in the ethical way and legal way, but it didn't matter what it was, whether it was a bug bounty program like Yahoo's program or it was some random vulnerable disclosure program, some company that just spun up on HackerOne that gave me the opportunity to be able to just hack and just shop it up my skills. But the thing that really helped me with these bug bounty programs and these disclosure programs was that it allowed me to have a resume. Prior to doing bug bounties, my resume didn't have a whole lot on it. All I had done up to this point was be in college, go out, and really not any professional or cybersecurity background, but doing bug bounties really allowed me to create a resume by putting all these vulnerabilities that I've found and quoting these companies and saying, hey, I found a cross-site scripting in these following programs or these following companies and placing them all onto my resume, which eventually scored me my first job as an AppSec engineer at Hulu. And honestly, if it wasn't for bug bounties and vulnerable disclosure programs, A, I would have never had the connection to Hulu and B, I would have never had this job because I wouldn't have a resume that showed off my skills and so on. And to be honest, throughout the process, I was able to make some money. I made some money that paid for my school. I've made some money that helped me go through vacation, pay for some of my debt, buy my first car. And honestly, the first car was a beautiful thing because in about March of 2014, I received a $9,000 bounty. It was three $3,000 bounties for SQL injections on Yahoo. If you look them up, they're probably published by now on the Hacker One Activity from 9, 10 years ago. But that 9,000 is what really got the gears moving in my head because I had this cash at hand and I had the opportunity to go and purchase this car. But then I was like, what else can I do with this money? And this is all before the job, any of that is my first year. So it really got the gears moving in my head and going, what else can I do 
if I take this opportunity seriously and I go and chase this dream of wanting to do hacking and hacking organizations for fun and profit, whatever you want to call it. And I tell you all of this because I want you to understand that 10 years ago, I wasn't this motivated. I wasn't this organized or driven to want to do better for myself. But bug bounties really allow me to make these changes. And before you drop me a comment and say, hey, I know there are more hackers now, but it's not as easy. There's more competition. Also think about it, that there are more programs and way more resources on web hacking and bug bounty hunting than ever, than even 10 years ago when I was getting started. So when I was doing bug bounty hunting and I was just getting started 10 years ago, a lot of the stuff that I was hacking on was DVWA, Metal Exploitable, and there wasn't really a hack the box or pen tester lab, try hack me, all these different platforms to go and learn on or even a hacker 101 platform that got you invited to these programs so everything was just word of mouth asking other hackers how they did their work and just learning things on your own and i'm not trying to say it was easy obviously i had to make some adjustments for example i had to give up going out and partying with my friends i couldn't play call of duty five or six times a week and it was just time for me to invest in myself by learning something that a could potentially earn me a job, but also pay me and put me through college and make me want to just do better for myself. So my first vulnerability took me about three months. I started in late October, I want to say of 2013 and in early 2014 is when I got my first bounty. And I honestly think three to six months is a right and good spot to set as a goal to say, hey, I want to find my first valid vulnerability in this time frame. So what I need you to do for the next three to six months is that I really need you to lock in and set a schedule and build that muscle to want to hack. And I talk about the building muscle and the habit of hacking in a bit, but I really need you to lock in and start investing in yourself and making some changes and making adjustments and giving things up that are not doing you any good. And instead, investing in yourself with a goal of either scoring your first bounty, getting a few vulnerabilities in for a resume, or even scoring your first job. So if you're in and you've made it this far into the video, do me a favor, drop me a comment and say, I'm locked in, I'm in, and I'm gonna walk you through what we should do next in case you want to follow my advice. Earlier, I talked about video games, and honestly, I think hacking is kind of similar to video games, and if you think about it, when you first start a video game, or if you've never played a video game on a PC, you're a console player, and you switch over, you need to adjust to some changes. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to get better at understanding how the game works, understanding what are the different strategies, for example, what are the different corners people can be playing Call of Duty, uh, what are the different key bindings, and all of that. And hacking isn't any different. You have to start practicing, understanding how these vulnerabilities work. And honestly, at some point, you have to stop learning to hack and finally start hacking to learn more and more, to build a methodology, to find vulnerabilities and understand how to approach a real world application. So I say all of that to tell you, just like anything else in life, including video games, if you want to get better at something, you have to practice. You have to put in the time. You have to keep on going back to the game, whether it's hacking or an actual video game, and make the time and effort to be able to get better. So if you want to do this, you want to take my advice, here's what I need you to do. I need you to sit down and make a list of all the things that you do daily. Obviously, you have your eight hours of sleep you need. If you're going to school and you're going to work, there's about six to eight hours. If you're working from home, I'm sure you have more free time than most others do. I'm not saying that your job isn't as important, but I'm just saying that you are at home. You don't have to commute. You're not getting stuck in traffic. You can do things at your table or at your desk, whether it's healthy or not, but you just have more time. And you can make a list of everything you do every day. So a big one for me was video game. I realized that I was playing video games from six to nine every day. I scaled that down to once or twice a week, maybe on the weekends, just as a break because I have more time on the weekends. And then cutting out on how much I was going out, how much I was drinking, how much I was partying with my friends and going out to dinner and that kind of stuff. So those are the things that it's nice to have. And I'm not saying you should give up your social life, but when you're doing them on a daily basis, if you're playing video games three times a week, seven days a week, that's 20 hours, 21 hours that you could be investing in yourself and doing bug bounties and chasing your dreams. So we need to do this first and understand what are some things that you can make room for. And I'm not saying that you need to do this like four, five, six hours a day. I'm just trying to tell you, you need to build a muscle that hacking becomes a second nature where when you see things and it piques your interest, you want to poke at them or that you know between these hours when you're free, it's a time that you're going to invest in yourself, whether it's just learning things or hacking on a bug bounty program or joining a community of people that can hack with you and help you get there. And the next thing I need you to do is to join a community, whether you want to join my Discord, 
I'll link that down below in the description or join any bug hunters discord. There's a bunch of them out there. Just join a discord. And within those communities, what I need you to do is reach out to someone that seems interesting to you or has similar goals to you and just message them and say, Hey, I noticed you're doing something similar to me. I want to also find my first bug. Maybe we can become accountability buddies or just hack together and learn from each other. And honestly, having someone to hack with really helps you learn from each other, but also understand how they approach things. And then it also makes it less boring and lonely because that's also the reality of it, that being behind a computer alone is, could get very lonely. And honestly, having someone to do it with, it's a lot more fun. And last but not least, this is the most important one. Decide what kind of program you want to hack on. Honestly, if you go to a bug bounty program, well, you're going to make some money, but there is more competition there versus if you go to a vuln disclosure program, there's less competition. So you can hack on any of these programs right here. And honestly, if you do that, it's going to be easy to find your first vulnerability and finding your first vulnerability is going to allow you to get into the invite algorithm for either bug crowd or hacker one, where they will invite you to private programs. And it just helps you go into that invite algo more and more and allows you to get exclusive private programs to hack on that could open up the door for you to make some more money. And to be real with you, it only takes one program, whether it's a VDP or a paid program to help you get into the algorithm. And if you find a program that pays you, it's going to build momentum. It's going to push you to the next level of your hunting. That's all I have for this video. I think this is a great place for us to stop. Drop me a comment. Let me know. Are you in? Are you going to do this with us? And if you are, what Discord are you going to join? What program are you going to hack on? And maybe in the comments, you can find somebody to collaborate with and team up and hack with each other. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on the notification bell. This way you get notified every Monday when I drop a new video and drop me a comment. Who knows, you may find somebody to collaborate with down in the comments. Let me know, are you going to start hacking or is this something that you want to hear more about and what kind of other content you want me to make in the future? All right, that's it. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.